Hey guys, it's Kevin again this morning for Ains of Shield Season 2, Episode 17, Melinda. And again, another great episode. And I was definitely looking forward to this episode. It was really cool that we focused on Melinda in this episode. I mean, especially because of the cliffhanger last week. We really need to see more of Melinda's past. And I definitely like that we saw in this episode. We didn't necessarily need to see it, but I think it was cool that we did see because it gave us more to her character. And that's something I'm definitely enjoying about this season of of S.H.I.E.L.D. It seems like they're, they are going to be doing this. And I've said there, this before, is that a lot of this season, one of the things I love is that they take at least an episode to focus on an agent per episode. And while there's so many storylines going on right now, it really worked really well. And I thought overall this was a great episode. Um, not the best episode of the season, but I still thought it was a great episode. And definitely one of the best of the season. I'm really loving this season. And I, I just think this was a great episode. So let's just get into it because it was, as usual, fantastic. And honestly... As the episodes go on, it just gets better and better. Really, it does. I mean, ever since um, ever since they've introduced this new storyline, it's just gotten better and better, and I love that. So, we start off in seven years ago. Melinda's taking a shower, and Andrew's with her, and once they're done, he suggests that once Melinda comes back from her trip, they take a vacation, and... I'm like, Melinda needs a vacation. Like, she really does, honestly. She's so busy, and we see that the doorbell rings, and she's kind of pissed off because Coulson is late, is early, which he always is, and Andrew calls Coulson, and he apologized for running early, and admits that he might bring Andrew a new patient, and I really didn't know what time period we we're going to be in, so when we saw Coulson, we're like, okay, cool. I thought this was going to be, like, before she met Coulson, before she teamed up with Coulson, but no, this is... Still, like, when she was with Coulson, which I really like seeing. Um, basically, Andrew tells Coulson to keep his wife safe and tells Melinda to be careful. She promises that when she gets back, they'll start working on a family. And I thought that was a really good scene because, you know, she really wants to have kids with him. And he really wants to have kids with her. And I thought that was really good. So... Colson and Melinda meet with the team and prepare to head out to recover the new enhanced. And Colson tells Melinda that Nick Fury is starting a new initiative for to form a team of um, enhances. And when he said that, I'm like, he's talking about the Avengers, obviously. This is before they had the Avengers. But you can see here that he's starting to set up the Avengers. So we're going to say this is like 2008 when Iron Man was first coming out. I'm pretty sure that was around the time when this was taking place. Just him saying that, that made me think this is probably around when Iron Man came out. Because that's how this all started. So Melinda assures him that she's staying in the field just as Agent Hart comes in and brings with their file on Eva to help with the capture. And Coulson explains that Eva has enhanced strength and that they have to avoid um, spooking her. And Hart warns the approach, um, basically, and basically Hart warns that the approach will be um, public in the country of um, Bahrain, and they have no choice, but Melinda wonders what happens if Eva doesn't cooperate, and Eva gestures to his soldiers and says that he'll call in the cavalry, and then we get back to the present, and I thought that was really good. I like seeing how Coulson and Melinda used to work together this before, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. was a thing, because this was before S.H.I.E.L.D. The S.H.I.E.L.D. wasn't really a thing yet, and I liked seeing that here. So aboard the carrier, Melinda arrives in the briefing room as Bobby and, we and um, Weaver track, um, track Fitz, and Bobby tells uh, Melinda that they want to make sure Fitz doesn't contact um, Coulson, and Weaver asks Melinda about Project Deathlock and brings up video of the cyborg because, of course, you know, they know that Fitz took um, the toolbox. You know, Gem Gemma knows that. I forgot to say that in my review. Someone commented um, that Gemma did know that Fitz took the toolbox and she was okay with it. Now they just need to find Fitz. And I think knowing that he took it, I think, is even better because now that they know, I was very interested in seeing how this was going to play out. So Melinda claims that Coulson didn't keep her up to speed on every operation, and that that's why we're getting these flashbacks, is we're seeing how these operations used to go, and basically, I thought that was really well done. And Weaver explains that Coulson was moving resources across the globe under the code name Theta Protocol, and they warned that Coulson spent millions on the project, and Melinda offers to talk to him in peaceful if they let her take control of the base, and Weaver agrees and gives Melinda all the intel that they have on Coulson. She asks if they're right to worry. Melinda insists that Coulson isn't their enemy, and I like she's saying that, because they do need to stress that. She's not their enemy. Um, you know, he's not their enemy, but they, I don't really know if they should trust him, because again, as I said before, he's not really a good leader. He, he's not exactly the best leader, but I do like what he's doing. I mean, what he's currently doing, I think, is the right thing to do, but he's just not really the best leader for them. So as I go outside of Afterlife, Jiang notes that S.H.I.E.L.D. sent agents after Daisy, and Daisy says that they lost, that, um, she lost control, and Jiang explains that Daisy resonates, and I really like what Jiang says to Daisy. 
having Jiang in the picture, I think, is one of the best things they could do because Jiang knows what Daisy is going through. You know, and if they were to put her with Reyna, I mean, Reyna is going through the same exact thing with Daisy. So the best person to talk to her is Jiang. And I'm not saying that Lincoln wasn't the best person to talk to her because Lincoln was a good person, but who better to talk to her than her own mother who's gone through this? And basically, Jiang doesn't know how she can begin, but offers her a stone. And basically, Daisy takes it and concentrates and then says that she can hear um, the nearby mountains. And basically, Jiang tells her to amplify the frequency. And she's basically going to help Daisy control her powers, which I really like seeing. So Daisy warns that a lot of people got hurt. And the older woman assures her that she won't be hurt. And Daisy concentrates again. And a section of the mountain collapses, calling it an avalanche. And Jiang tells her that the feeling isn't something to be afraid of in. And I've said before, I love this storyline because, and I love it even more now because this is her mother basically telling her not to be afraid of her powers. Because honestly, the only reason Daisy's powers got all like crazy and the reason that people almost died is because Daisy had no idea what she was doing. That's why that happened. If she's more in control of her powers, then these won't be a bad thing. And Daisy needs to understand that this is not a bad thing that's happening to her. It simply is just something that is happening to her. And I really like seeing Jiang talk to Daisy about it because I, I, th I just thought that was great. I, I love seeing that. So we go back to seven years ago, and Hart introduces Colson and Melinda to Falsey Ahmed with Bahrain National Security. And they've located Eva in a cafe and warned that it's a dangerous part of town. And Fasse says that if they can't take Eva with her, then his military will take them. And Colson leads a group in and sits down next to Eva. He introduces himself and says that he's there to help. And... A young girl goes by, and by the way, this is very important, this young girl. Um, she plays a huge role in this flashback, and I, I love what they do with her. Basically, Melinda agrees, you know, sees her, and she's smiling, and kind of you can see that Melinda's getting this look because, of course, you know, she wants to have children, and what's really sad is, you know, Melinda doesn't have children, and you're wondering, well, why didn't it work out with Andrew? And we actually see why in this episode, which I like seeing. So three locals with guns come in, Melinda spots them, Hart is another agent, O'Brien intervene, Colson suggests that they go somewhere private, but e e um, Eva refuses. When he asks what she's looking for, Eva says that she wants pain and sends a table flying across the cafe, and the locals and the agents all draw guns, and one of the locals grabs a girl as a shield, they grab O'Brien and retreat into a warehouse and shoots Vise when he tries to intervene. So I thought that was an awesome scene, I love that. So then we go back to Afterlife, and Jiang is telling Daisy to rest up for her next training session, and she glances at a man and says that she needs to take care of something else and tells Daisy that she's very proud of her. And Lincoln comes over, and, and Daisy tells him what she did, and he admits that it's unusual for Jiang to mentor anyone. As I said before, I see a lot of chemistry between Lincoln and Daisy. I don't know if they're trying to pursue a relationship here, but every time I see Lincoln and Daisy, I'm like, why aren't these two together? Like, seriously, he's perfect for her. He's made her so much more confident. And for once, we're seeing a happy Daisy. We've never seen Daisy happy. We've always seen Daisy, you know, really, you know, unaware of what's going on. But Daisy's really happy here. And I love seeing this more, you know, carefree, fun side of Daisy because it's just something we don't usually see. And I think that um, Chloe Bennett is definitely handling it really well, and I, I love the way that she's handling it there. So, he admits that it's unusual for Jiang to mentor anyone. He says that she's in charge, and it, she's probably just mentoring her because she's her mother. That's probably why. I mean, that's why she's doing that. And Lincoln then gives Daisy some takeout and tells her that Jiang has never trained anyone before. Now, I don't condone favoritism, but this is her daughter, who she's been wanting to talk to for years and who she's been looking for for years. Obviously, she's going to want to interact with her somehow. I mean, that's just how it's going to be. She's going to want to interact with her daughter. I mean, Cal wanted to interact with Daisy, and so did Jiang. And I understand you have to keep Cal away, but Jiang is the best thing for her right now because Jiang knows what she's going through, and I, I love that. So as Melinda and Bobby fly back to the base, Bobby asks Melinda if Colson ever mentioned Theta Protocol to him, and she says that they felt the same and swore to build S.H.I.E.L.D. up the right way. However, she couldn't ignore a secret as big as Theta Protocol, and Melinda says she understands Bobby's choice, but says that sometimes people don't understand when someone does the right thing, and it hurts like hell, and... That is a very important line in this episode. That goes very well with the flashbacks. And when we understand Melinda's talking about it, I was like, okay, that makes so much sense now. Because at first, I'm like, 
what exactly is she talking about here? And it just makes us more intrigued to see the flashback, which is what's great about that is that immediately after that scene, there's a flashback that comes up. And Melinda confirms that the locals that helped Eva are a local militia state, uh, street gang, and the warehouse is their headquarters. So Coulson calls O'Brien to see what their demands are, but he tells them to leave him alone and hang up, and the shield tag agents prepare to move in. And Melinda wants to go with them, but Coulson tells her to let them do their thing, and I thought that was interesting because, as we said, Coulson didn't really breathe, you know, have her help on mission, missions and things like that, and we're seeing that here. We're seeing that Coulson just really didn't trust her as much, and I thought that was interesting to see. So Gordon is tending to Raina, but she says that she wants to, and I thought this scene was great because Raina's even worse, is even worse shape than Daisy. I mean, Raina's just being, you know, think of what's happening to Raina. She's been ridiculed by everyone. People think of her as a monster. She thinks she's a monster, and just, I felt so bad for Raina. Whoever plays Raina, amazing scene here. Amazing acting. She is killing it this season. Um, Gordon is heading to Raina, but she says that she wants to leave. She insists that she's a monster. Just as Lincoln comes in, he assures her that she'll get through it. But Gordon tells him to stay out of it and tells Raina to focus on the gifts. And Lincoln speaks up again, and Gordon says that he knows nothing about change. He tells Raina that their care is the best thing for her, and it really is. I mean, again, they know what, they, what she's gone through, so they can help her with that as well. And... Raina says that she just wants to be free. She just wants to be treated normally, and she wants to be free. And Gordon gives up and leaves, and Lincoln assures Raina that he means well. He offers her, you know, I think Gordon gets up because Gordon, I don't think, has much hope in himself. You know, he's not really a confident person. And let's face it, Gordon is not really the happiest person. I mean, he has no eyes, and he always cons consistently talks about it. He's not really happy, so I like what Lincoln says to Raina. He assures Raina that he means well, and he offers her something to help her sleep. But Raina says that in her nightmares, she's been hunted like an animal, and sometimes she dreams of Cal and Daisy having dinner, and Daisy's happy because she got everything, and Raina's really worried because she's not getting that, and it's true. Daisy is definitely in a much better position for her. You know, Daisy has her parents by her side. She has people that care about her. Raina has nobody. I mean, all the only people that Raina had was Hydra and Coulson, but Hydra, of course, wants something to do with her because she left Hydra, and now she's not going to work with Coulson because they don't want S.H.I.E.L.D. They don't want, Med they don't, you know, they don't want, um, you know, Inhumans there. So what's the point of, you know, this, um, you know, she really has no one, and I just felt really bad for Rain in that scene. I thought that was amazing, and Lincoln tells her not to give up on them yet, and leaves, and I really hope something, you know, she can get some sort of hope, because she's losing all this hope, and it was really sad to see. So back seven years ago, Colson and Melinda monitor the attack team for the van. The militia open fire and Hart orders his team to dis to disengage as they take friendly fi as they take friendly fire. And the radio goes dead, and Colson says he has to call it in. And Melinda realizes that they're alone. And Jiang, back in the present, Jiang sets up some glasses and tells Daisy to hold the notes that she's been playing. And Daisy repeats the notes and then makes all the glasses um, reverberate, but then they shatter. And I have to say, some of my favorite scenes in the show, they are doing a great job with the uh, special effects in these scenes. I mean, I know some people said that the special effects in the show sucked last year. Like, I heard people say that. And they're doing a great job with that. I think they're doing a really good job with the way they're handling it, and it definitely looks really well done. So Daisy says that everything's going well, and afterlife feels like home, and that never ends well for her. And it's I understand what Daisy's saying. It, everything kind of just seems too good to be true, because Daisy's never really, you know, for a while she hasn't really had this happiness. And Giant wonders why she feels this way, and Daisy explains that she once broke a crystal um, decanter at a foster family's home. And some saying something bad always happens for her when she settles somewhere. And she was the closest she came to having a real family and Jiang assures uh, Daisy that they will never turn on her and I love that Jiang tells her that because she is her mother and that she truly does love her and she'll do anything for Daisy and she always has loved her and Cal will never turn, her, turn on her and Daisy doesn't really believe her though and it's understandable why I mean she hasn't seen these people in years so she doesn't know if she should trust them yet it's understandable why she doesn't really know she hasn't really seen these people in a while. I mean, she just, she doesn't really know. And the old woman finally tells Daisy her birthday, and Daisy realized that J Jiang is her mother. She didn't know that she was her mother before. And Daisy then realized this here, and I thought it was amazing to see, because of course, you know, she didn't know that. She just knew that Jiang, you know, she could relate to her and things like that, and Daisy goes outside, and Jiang says that she wanted to go to her the second she saw her, and Daisy's kind of hurt, because, you know, she just came out of nowhere, and 
However, she wanted Daisy to join their people without any outside influence, and Giant explains that the two of them hunted the world to find Daisy, but they soon became ruthless people be, by, doing, by doing what it takes, and she left da Cal to protect others like Daisy and promises to make up for all their lost hours, and... However, Daisy asks Sky to keep the relationship a secret because their people could perceive Daisy as a threat. And I do understand what she's where she's coming from. I mean, she can't tell anyone that Jiang is her mother. If Rain were to find out, she'd be infuriated. She'd be like, you're getting all a special dream because your family's here. And, you know, she doesn't know that Jiang is her mother. So Daisy is to keep it as secret as possible. All she knows is that Cal is her father. That's all she knows. And... That's best that that's all she knows. I hope that she doesn't find out because it'll it'll destroy Raina if she finds that out. So at the base, Melinda visits Gemma and explains that she's the new commander, and she explains that Gemma is unwittingly working on um, Deathlock's power pack, and Gemma has no idea what Theta Protocol is, and Gemma asks what she can do, and Melinda says they need to find out what the truth is. So basically, Melinda's now taking over, and that's awesome. I love seeing Melinda, you know, be a badass and take over, because, you know, she is a badass. And example is the flashback seven years ago. However, this flashback was amazing. It was very effective, and that line where Melinda says sometimes we don't understand why we have to do, you know, why things we are doing is a good thing, really, we see why in the scene. So, Colson calls for emergency back and recommends um, spending Melinda in. His superiors order him to wait, and Melinda says that she needs to slip in and pull them out without a loss of life. The Bahrainian military arrive, and Colson sends Melinda in while he tries to stall for time. The colonel has one of his soldiers push Colson out of the way, but Colson says that they're dealing with a, high, a highly lethal biological weapon, and the colonel hesitates, but before she goes in, Melinda calls Andrew and says she's going in, in alone to rescue this little girl, and... Andrew assures her that she's done it before and has already gone back and gives Melinda advice on how to deal with the girl. Because, of course, you know, they plan on having children. And he tells his wife to come home safe. And then Melinda leaps up to the balcony, enters the warehouse, takes out a guard, tries to call Colson, but gets no response. She makes her way through the warehouse, taking out guards. She finds Hart in a room, but he turns and says that he needs her pain. And as he draws her gun, Melinda disarms him, slams him into the wall. And But he repeats the statements to O'Brien and the tax soldiers all approach Melinda, all saying that they need her pain. Melinda tries to get through to them, warning that Eve is controlling them and nothing happens. She shoves hard into the others, gets out and bars the door, and Gemma then worries, and the, you know, we go back to the president, Gemma worries about what they'll find about while Melinda cross-references Coulson's tips against Bobby's intel, and they show that he lied about where he was going, because he didn't tell them where he was going. And that's something they should think about, I mean... If he really trusts them, he'd, he'd tell them where he was going, but he knows that they're coming after him, so it's understandable why. And Gemma has found evidence of construction um, through shell companies and tells Melinda that Coulson has a whole other life, and she hesitates and then says that Coulson met secretly with Andrew, and Mac then comes in and says, I figure that Coulson is building another base for in, 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 enhanced enhances and he figures that Colson is planning to train enhances and needs a good psychologist so he's basically going to do what Nick Fury's going to do and if this is true then this is definitely setting up maybe some possible post credit scene in Avengers Age of Ultron I mean I heard there is a mid credit scene and I kind of feel like this is setting that up you know we're going to see Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, I mean, they're not officially part of the Avengers yet, so maybe he'll train them, maybe he'll recruit them, I mean, this kind of makes me feel like Nick Fury died, I mean, they said they're coming off a major Avenger, and the best thing to do is to kill off Nick Fury, and if, and if that's what they do, then Colston will definitely take over as the person that recruits this these enhances, and... I think that is great that he's doing that. I hope that's true that that is what he is doing. So Melinda asks Gemma to get him into the toolbox. When the scientist hesitates, Melinda tells her that they can't afford to underestimate the enhanced. And Gordon visits Raina, and she realizes that she can never leave. And he warns her that it's too dangerous in public and says that their gifts are deeply layered. And Raina wonders what her use is. And Gordon assures her that her beauty will be reflected in a wonderful gift. She accepts his help as long as he's her teacher, and I thought that was a great scene because you definitely see that things are starting to look up for Raina. I, I, you know, she knows that she can't leave, but Gordon's right by her side. He seems to care about her, and I think that Gordon is definitely going to help her through this. I mean, they both really aren't happy right now, so I think they're going to help each other out, and I think that's going to be—I really hope that happens because I really like that. 
So Jayan confronts a young man, Ethan, who says that he's talking some time to backpack, and as Daisy looks on, Jayan wished him a good trip, and once they're alone, Jayan explains that Ethan hasn't been exposed to the mist yet, and she then takes Daisy to a gazebo outside of Afterlife and says that she can't bypass the process, and when Daisy skipped the process, Jayan protected her, and she missed that it happened once with a woman who stole a batch of... Um, Turga, um, Turrigan crystals and fled to Bahrain. And of course, she's talking about Melinda. So we see how this all connects because Melinda fights her way through the warehouse. She gets to Eva's room. Eva punches her across the room and says she feels everyone's pain. She grows stronger. And Daisy recognizes the story as the one where Melinda went in. And Jiang says it was much more complicated than just Melinda killing Eva. There was a lot more to it. And we find out what it is here. The real truth of this story is devastating, but it's such a well-done story, and it's so effective, too. I mean, it, it really is well done. It kind of reminds me of what The Walking Dead in, did in Season 4. It definitely reminds me of that. Melinda sees a girl, tells her to stay back. Eva pulls down a chandelier, swings them at Melinda, who dodges. They fight, and the two militia men come back in. Melinda knocks him out, tells Eva that it can end when she releases everyone. Eva demands more and attacks Melinda, and one of her men shoots Melinda like she keeps fighting me, just a stab even the chest and more militia men come in melinda tells him to snap out of it however the girl katia steps out and she was legitimately creepy like this was really creepy she's like i like the pain take my hand and it's just really creepy and giant explains that eva stole the crystals for her so she could receive her birthright and katia kills the militia man feeding on their pain tells melinda that she's scared and wants to leave she begs melinda to take her hand I know Brian and the others arrive. Melinda tells Katya to let them go rather than kill them. Katya offers her hand. Backing away, Melinda grabs a discarded gun and tells the girl to stop. When Katya keeps coming, Melinda shoots her dead. And yeah, she had to kill this little girl. And she had to. There was no way to save her. You know, there, there really was no saving her. The damage was done. There was nothing she could do. And that is the devastating truth. And that goes with what Melinda was saying when she said... We don't understand the good things that we do because Melinda knew she did a good thing, but she didn't really see it as a good thing because this, she really cared about this little girl. I mean, think about it. She really wants a child, and then she just kills this girl, and she just feels so devastated because how is she going to be a mother if she just kills her, uh, you know, that girl like that? And basically, Jiang explains that she had to do it. She had to kill Katya. There's nothing else she could do. And we see this devastating scene of Colts and the Bahrains. They hear the gunshot. They run and they find Melinda holding Katya's corpse. And that makes sense why her and Andrew's relationship didn't work off, you know, didn't work out. They probably argued over, you know, not wanting kids anymore. He probably was like, I, I want kids. What are you doing? And I, I think it really is what's going on. So Jiang says that their people knew what a woman will do to protect her secret. And Daisy assures her that no one will ever know. And I like that Jiang related that to that because it's true. Melinda's never told anyone that she killed Katia, and the only person that knows is Daisy and Melinda. Those are the only people that know, and I thought that was great that we saw that. And that really applies what Daisy has to. She can't tell anyone that Jiang is her mother because it's going to end up horribly. So. Back to seven years ago, Gordon and Jiang watch in the shadows as Colson helps Melinda and the tag team out, and the tag team are impressed when that Melinda single-handedly rescued them, and Melinda tells Colson that she couldn't save Katya, and he tells her that she has to let the girl go, and he can see that she definitely was attached, and Melinda's breaking into tears, and Colson holds her, and it's understandable why she's so upset. So later at home, Melinda goes about her life. She's shocked when Andrew tries to take her hand. She remembers Katya offering her hand jerks away. Once she leaves, Andrew finds Melinda's request to be transferred to a desk job, and that, you can see, that is why Melinda is, you know, not as, you know, doesn't do as much anymore. That's why Melinda doesn't do as much combat and things like that. I mean, when she does combat, she's really good, but after that, you know, she just really couldn't work with, um, you know, she really couldn't work on that job anymore. It was just too much for her, and... I really love what that showed, and I thought that was really well done, and I just, I love that. So Melinda looks at the photos of Colson and Andrew together, and Jiang takes Daisy to Cal, and that she owes it to him, basically. She insists that Cal was good once, and he never gave up on Daisy. Jiang asks her to have one dinner with Cal, and then Daisy will never have to see him again. And they go in, and Cal greets his daughter. 
gives her flowers, thanks both of them for giving him another chance, because she really still doesn't really trust Cal, which I can understand. And Daisy says that she learned who her mother was, and it was possible because of Daisy. Both of them go silent, and Jiang mentions Daisy's birthday, and Cal takes up the hands and describes how Daisy was born. He seats them, pours champagne. When he mentions the year, Sky Daisy realizes that she's actually 26, and they share a toast, and... It's a really small moment, but it was a really good moment. So as they have dinner, Lingan comes in and realizes that Raina described exactly what was happening. And so, yeah, Raina's told everyone what's happened, and that's not going to end up well for anyone. So I don't really know what's going to happen there. We'll, we'll have to see. I mean, Raina now knows stuff that she shouldn't know, so I think it's really interesting. So two S.H.I.E.L.D. agents wait in a restaurant. Finally, one of them knocks at the restroom door. Fitz is inside opening a toolbox. He then calls Lance and Colson at the hotel room where they've taken cover. And Fitz explains that he stole the toolbox and he's being followed and asks Colson to show him how to shake a tail. And Lance confirms that there's an electric hand dryer in the restroom and assures Fitz that he'll be okay. And that's how the episode ends. So basically, we don't really know what's going to happen with this. Um, you know, Now that Fitz has this you know, um, toolbox, I don't really know what's going to happen there. But one of the things I love this episode is that I focus a lot more on Melinda and Daisy. It showed how similar these two are. They both have secrets that they can never tell anyone. They have to be careful with it. Is Raina going to tell Lincoln, you know, exactly what happened? You know, what exactly did she tell Lincoln? I don't know. I'm interested in seeing what's going on there. I think that's going to be cool to see. Um, I feel like Daisy's going to trust Cal more, definitely. I feel like we're definitely setting up this family reunion. Because I don't really think Daisy wants Cal in her life, but I definitely feel like she's getting to the point where maybe she's starting to trust him. I can definitely see that start to happen. If that's true, I think that's great that Daisy's starting to trust him, because she should. Um, Melinda, I think it's great that Melinda is now taking over, um, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. basically. I think that's really cool to see. Is Coulson starting to become Nick Fury? I feel like he's going to start to do what Nick Fury does. And if that's true, I think that's really cool if he starts to do that. I kind of feel like that's what season three is going to be. Is Coulson um, getting new recruits for the Avengers? I can definitely see Coulson doing that because I think that's definitely something that Coulson would be really good at. I mean... He worked with the Avengers, you know, he helped Tony Stark make, you know, with Captain America's shield. He helped, you know, with many things, and he was there for the Avengers. So why not have him take over? I mean, Nick Fury gave him this job, so, I mean, eventually Nick Fury knew he was going to die. So if Nick Fury does die in Avengers Age of Ultron, is Coulson going to take over? I definitely see that being a possibility. Um... Colson. What else is Colson hiding from mention and seeing what's going on there? Um, I'd like to see more flashbacks of what happened after Gemma filed to get a new job. I'd like to see what else happened there, because I think that could be really interesting as well. Um, but what do you guys think of this episode? Overall, guys, another fantastic episode. Really loving this season. I can't believe that there's only... Um, there's only five episodes left. Wait, 18, 19. Yeah, five episodes left, and it's going to be an amazing last five episodes. I can't wait for it. But that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Also, um... Raina, is Raina gonna, you know, finally, is, Raina, is are things gonna look up for Raina? I really feel bad for Raina, I hope things get better for her, but we'll see how things work out overall. But that's my review, hope you guys enjoy it, I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for Finding Carter, so I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.